Are you an introvert? Do you feel like it's holding you back? Well, this show is for the introverts who just want to be great. Let's tell that story today. It's the RK3 Show, and I'm that dude, Robert Kennedy III, RK3, that's me. We're 10 episodes in. I know that might not seem like a big deal for some people, but it's double digits, folks. Double digits. It's a marker. It's a milestone. There's significance to it. Here's why. This is my fourth podcast, and two of the prior ones made it past 10 episodes. I reached... 60 episodes with one of them. But the truth is, I've seen a lot of podcasts, okay? I've seen a lot of podcasts who get three or four episodes in, and then they quit. They stop. They lose interest. And the worst part is that there are many people who need the information they're sharing. And they quit. A couple of shows ago, my guest, Altavis Peltzer, she shared that withholding your story is like denying someone a blood transfusion. And it's the same here. If you have something to share, dive in, do it. Now, I'm aware that there are some people who just get an idea and they do it for fun and then they move on. But if you know you ought to be sharing your story and you're inclined to do it via podcast, don't quit after two. Keep going. All right. What a way to start the show, huh? I was all serious and everything. All right. Usually, I've laughed like three times by now when you're cracking up with me. You are. I know you are. I can feel it. Anyway, let's get moving. I want to open up with a new segment called What You Reading, Robert? It's the segment of the show where I tell you what clothes I'm buying at Nordstrom. No, I'm playing. It's the segment where I share what I'm reading. Now, I've shared books with you before, but as a way of keeping myself accountable to reading, I'll share with you one of the latest books that I'm reading. I won't give you the Cliff Notes version or anything because I want you to read too, but I'll tell you the author, the title, and a quick synopsis. Okay, so let's start let's start with this one. What you reading, Robert? I'll get some sound effects for that next time so it can be really professional sounding. What you reading, Robert? Okay, I'll, let me get into this. I'm reading right now The Artist's Journey by Stephen Pressfield. It's not a brand new book, but it's by an author I really like. I've read one of his other books, The War of Art, and it made a huge difference for me especially in how I viewed personal challenges. And this book is like the advanced class in that one. This is like the honors or AP class you take next semester. Seth Godin, if you've heard of him, Seth Godin describes this book as the essential compass and kick in the pants. You persist and you push, you find your calling. And, and then what? You begin the artist's journey. And I'm not finished yet, but... That's not what this is about. I'm not sharing books I've finished. I'm sharing books I'm currently reading. Hence, what you're reading, Robert? What you're reading, Robert? <laughs> All right. Yes. Anyway, I hope you find, I hope you're finding these episodes valuable and use doing some loining. Get it, get it. Yes. Get your learn on. If you're finding value, I'd like your help in keeping things going. So here's how you can help. Number one. You can leave a review and a rating, a rating, a rating for the show. Actually, a review. I should say review three times because that's the more important part. You can leave a review and a rating on Apple Podcast. Yes, I know. They changed the name. It was so much easier to say iTunes. Leave a review on iTunes. Yeah, that feels right. <laughs> anyway, leave a review and a rating on Apple Podcast for me, and that helps us to improve our rankings. 
Another way, number two, another way you can help the show is by supporting us on Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. So go on over to patreon.com forward slash the RK3 show and you'll see the different levels of support you can give. You can support and receive perks from getting a shout out on the show to appearing on the show and getting discounts, ooh, discounts on the Speak Right Now Academy courses. Those are two huge ways you can help. Huge. All right. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Don't forget, send any questions, thoughts, suggestions, or feedback to podcast at robertkennedy3.com. That's podcast at robertkennedy3.com. Maybe you have a connection with somebody famous and you want us to interview her. Yes. Send an intro to podcast at robertkennedy3.com and we'll set it up and you'll get the credit. I promise. <laughs> All righty then. Let's rock the show. A few months ago, I went to this site, 16personalities.com, and I took a test. It's a personality assessment, and it's based on the Myers-Briggs assessment. Now, there are all sorts of assessments these days, right? DISC, Strength Finder, the Fascinate by Sally Hogshead. Got to have her on the show one day, sidebar. And there are all sorts of tests to help you understand you better. Communication, motivation, leadership, and more. You're listening to the RK3 Show. Anyway, I took this exam and it came up with a result for me. INTP. This means introverted, intuitive, thinking, and P for perceiving. <laughs> Let's talk about that word introvert for a second. Now, the majority of people I mentioned this to about me, they just don't believe this term should apply to me. There are a couple of reasons for this. First, they see me on stage speaking, performing, etc. And they see me engaging with people in group settings and, and they say I just don't appear uncomfortable to them. The second reason, however, is the biggie. They don't believe me because they have a slanted view of what it means to be introverted. The prevailing thought is that introverts are shy and they always like to be by themselves. Well, some of that's true, but there's, there are also levels to this. Okay, You can be on the extreme end of introversion or you can be anywhere along the scale all the way up until you cross that E line. That E for extrovert, right? The other thing is that shyness isn't necessarily an introvert trait. Ooh, some are shy, but some are not. In fact, there is such a thing as a shy extrovert. Wow, didn't know this. You're surprised to hear this. I, it's true. I looked it up. I Googled it. I'll place a link to a Psychology Today article in the show notes that goes through this. But when we break down introversion and extroversion, when we look at it as energy, here's how this works. Extroverts draw energy and introverts give energy. For example, there are extroverts who totally love being around people and can be in the center of the room dancing, but be awkward in conversation. And then there are introverts who are amazing public speakers, but after they speak and mill around with people, they retreat. They run away to get recharged because one draws energy from being around people and the other gets drained being around people. I'm a perfect example of this. If I speak or train for a few days, at the end of the week, I don't want to talk to anyone. My wife, she is the absolute opposite of that. She wants to be at the party, at the center of it, dancing and doesn't want to leave until the party's over. When she leaves, she still wants to socialize in the parking lot. <laughs> she wants to squeeze every drop of juice out of it. I mean, when we go to Six Flags in the summer, we're at, we're at the amusement park and after a few hours, I'm ready to go. But she wants to be there until the park closes and everyone is gone. She's milking this entire day. That's her. That's my wife. And yet, we're married, and we make it work well, right? One area we work this out on in, is in our vacations. She wants to vacation in this way. She goes, she, she goes to a vacation spot, and she wants to go to places. She wants to be around people. She wants to do excursions. She's got a plan. When we go on vacation, I want to do nothing 
and be by myself. So we've worked it out where when we vacation, the first day or two are nothing days. We hang out at the resort. I find a hammock or a blanket and totally chill. After that, we can go to Disney or wherever the attractions are. But that's what we've worked out because in order for me to be functional, I need that nothing time. Introverts, we need time to recharge because energy is drawn from us. But the way that our world is set up, we connect extroversion with the ability to be comfortable in public. Ergo, anyone who is a great great public speaker is an extrovert, right? Uh, wrong. <laughs> so not true. In fact, many admired public speakers are classified as introverts. Check out this list. Winston Churchill. Classic. Memorable, right? Introvert. Barack Obama. Smooth. Eloquent, right? Introvert. Elon Musk. Um... Is he an admired public speaker? I I don't know. I want a Tesla, though. (laughs) All right. Mahatma Gandhi. There we go. Introvert. Abraham Lincoln. Introvert. Hillary Clinton. J.K. Rowling. Introvert. Oprah Winfrey. What? Introvert. I'll place some links in the show notes from Inc. Magazine, Business Insider, and Reader's Digest in the show notes about this so that you can see that I'm not making this stuff up. Okay, but I really wanted to share this because I see so many people who have, as Les Brown says, greatness within them. But they're led to believe they can't step forward because they are, quote unquote, introverts. So the big point of the show today is that being an introvert, introversion is exactly the reason you should step forward. So let me share five reasons you should speak and lead as an introvert. Number one, some of the most successful people you have ever heard of are introverts. Introversion is not a barrier to success. Albert Einstein, Bill Gates, Marissa Mayer, Warren Buffett, all wildly successful and yet known introverts. Number two, introverts tend to lead from a place of empathy. The 2014 world champion public speaker, that's Toastmasters. They have a world championship of public speaking. Dananjaya Hediarachi, he mentions in his interview with Business Insider that introverts tend to not like being the center of attention. However, when they're intentional, they tend to be able to identify with the audience more easily and therefore can come across as more real, authentic, because they are more prone to empathy. Number three, introverts tend to think through their hands. No, I don't mean their hands are waving all over the place. (laughs) I'm talking about writing. Now, while not all writers are introverts, introverts tend to be writers. As a matter of fact, one of my friends, Michelle Mazur, she says that that is one of the clues. If they love to write, chances are they're an introvert. Now, maybe they don't write books, but writing is a world of solitude, which helps to helps the internal thought process. And it's often this writing that gives structure to speaking. So while introverts may not always speak off the cuff, the constant writing leads to depth and structure. I'll give a quick example in my own marriage. When I have conflict, one of the ways that I connect with my wife, one of the ways that I hear have her hear the message is I, I've got to write it. Yeah. Number four, introverts revel in silence. One of the most effective techniques for creating thought in your audience is to simply use silence. And for most people, this can feel awkward, but introverts tend to look towards silence. So if you tell an introvert, hey, it's okay to pause and not say anything here in their minds, they're like, yay, (laughs) right? And silence in a speech And as a leader, can be one of the most powerful techniques you can use. In silence, people think. Then they lean in and they ask, what's next? Number five, you don't need the energy. You can speak and then go off on your own and think. 
Okay, you don't need in, introverts don't need the energy of the room. They can share the message, share the content, and then that's enough. They can go off and think. So leverage that. Use that. Now, I get it. Introverts and extroverts. Those are both labels and there are exceptions for every label. And I don't always vibe with labels myself, but I get their value in helping to understand trends and how we operate as humans. So my purpose in doing this is to help you navigate the labels. The hard thing about labels is that they are consciously, unconsciously and subconsciously embedded Right. And you either work to leverage them, ignore them or you fight against them. No label is absolute. However, the world around you believes in them. So leveraging them or leveraging the label means you are ultimately attempting to operate with the rules that other people believe. Does that make sense? This is, this is about influence. The easiest way for me to say this is influence often means speaking a language the other person understands and connects with. So even if you internally dismiss labels, if your intention is influence, then you must understand how others perceive. When you understand this, you have a leg up on everyone else who operates by assumptions. And most of us do, even when we say we don't. Right. This is our world. This is how we operate. And when you understand this, ooh, the potential you have at your fingertips, this understanding is, is the key. This is where most successful people fly and others fail. Understanding that your the you connect by understanding the perceptions of others. So my goal today was to help you understand your own power, despite what others say you are while at the same time helping you to see what they perceive and then using that to connect. Does all of this make sense? If not, you know what to do. Email me. Send me a message. Podcast at robertkennedy3.com. That's podcast at robertkennedy3.com. I want to hear you. I want to hear your thoughts and answer your questions. That's it for today, peeps. I've got to go get some introvert stuff done. All right. Don't forget. Share the show with your friends and get them to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, Pandora. And hey, hey, support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash the RK3 show. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash the RK3 show. And visit me over in the Speak Right Now community on FB, Facebook. You can even hang out with me on Instagram. I'm Robert Kennedy 3 there. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. A lot of places. Choose one. Holler at me. Guess what, everybody? Everything that happens to you in life is your stuff. Your stuff is your story, and your story deserves a stage. I'm Robert Kennedy the Third, RK3, and you've been listening to the RK3.